be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Now let me ask you guys, you young, you young men, back then, if a soldier was going into battle, what kind of animal would he ride on? On a horse, that's right. So why is Jesus riding on a donkey instead of a horse? It's because he came in peace. He came to make peace with God for all of us people and for all who trust in him. That's why he died on the cross and that's why he rose again. So today is the beginning of Holy Week and let us uh, rejoice as we sing together our processional hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. to worship all the, those that join us in the sanctuary today. We also want to welcome those who join us by live stream from many different places. Uh, for their benefit, I would say that we began the service outside on this Palm Sunday with the reading of the Palm Sunday Gospel. And now, as we gather here for worship, we make confession of our sins. I invite you to kneel or sit as we confess together, if you are able. Peter boasted of his devotion, but then denied his Lord. The crowds on Palm Sunday shouted glad hosannas to the king, but by the end of the week their acclaim fell silent as Jesus, crowned with thorns, went to the cross. We too by our sins turn away from our Lord. Let us confess our sins to him and ask his forgiveness. Almighty God, while we boast of our faithfulness and devotion, in our thoughts, words, and actions, we often follow our own desires, turning away your will and your ways. Instead of following the commands and guidance of your holy word, we listen to the temptations of the world around us. When we have opportunities to witness for our Lord, we fall silent. As you showed grace to Simon Peter, turn to us in grace and forgive our sins. God has shown us His grace. He sent His Son to die on the cross, taking onto Himself the sins of the world and suffering the penalty of death that we deserve. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
You are forgiven and restored, called to serve others in the name of Jesus, our King and Savior. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Amen. Let us rise. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, Simon Peter proudly boasted of his faithfulness and his willingness to die for Jesus. Then when the time came, he denied the Lord and swore that he never, ever, never even knew him. We too are often less than loyal. When others question our faith, we may remain silent and have no answers for them. We do not always live in a way that reflects Jesus' love. Yet you have forgiven us as you forgave Peter and restored him to service. You have called us to serve others in your name and to be witnesses for our Savior. Help us to live in humble service as Jesus did, the humble King who entered Jerusalem to take up his cross for us. Hear our prayer in his name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
Rob Randall was called in to work today, so I invite you to turn to the back of the bulletin as we have the Old Testament reading. Psalm 50, I'm sorry, Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that this is one of the Messianic Psalms and that it speaks of how our Lord Jesus, despite all that he went on later in Holy Week to suffer, was determined to to go to the cross to fulfill the plan of salvation uh, and the assignment that God the Father had given to him. The second lesson is uh, Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11, and I invite you to read these words with me out loud. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sunday is Sing My Tongue, the Glorious Battle.
The gospel which I'm reading today is not that printed on the back of your bulletin. Uh, for most of my life, uh, this day was always known as Palm Sunday. Uh, and then with the coming of the three-year lectionary, some churches started to observe it as Passion Sunday, and others as Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. Um, I'm going to be reading the Gospel lesson for our Lenten and Holy Week series, Amazing Grace. Uh, but before I do that, let me just say that I believe one of the reasons that we need to still observe this as Palm Sunday is that you don't need to miss out on church on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. You need to be here. Uh, there are two of the most holy services and sacred services during the year. Uh, on Monday, Thursday, we recall the institution of the Lord's Supper and receive Holy Communion. On Good Friday, we have a tenebrae service, a service of darkness, where gradually during the service, the lights are lowered, the candles are extinguished, uh, we hear the sound of the three nails and the closing of the tomb, and then we leave in silence and darkness. It's a service not to be missed. So to me, personally, it's kind of a sellout to read the passion narrative from the gospel today, uh, and I hope you will join us later in the week as we have those readings on both Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. And so the gospel appointed for the uh, series Amazing Grace is Luke chapter 22, 24 through 34. Glory to you, O Lord. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The king of the Gentile, kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you, to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee. Be O Christ. If we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, you'll find it on the inside back cover of our Lutheran service book. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Throughout this uh, Lenten season, on Wednesday nights we have 
enjoyed the series Amazing Grace. It's the 250th anniversary of the writing of that hymn by John Newton. And the sermons have all been dialogues. I've been dialoguing with different people from the Bible who experience God's amazing grace. Today, I'm going to be speaking with St. Peter. Uh, we thank Adrian Beltran for filling in for Rob as he was called into work. You may be seated now as we join together in singing Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng. God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that through the Holy Scriptures, your servants of old, including St. Peter, still speak to us today. We recall the denial of our Lord by Peter three times in the garden, the courtyard of the high priest. But more importantly, we recall his repentance and his restoration as a, not only an apostle, but as the leader of the apostles. And so, Lord, we pray that as we hear of your grace today toward Peter, grace for the fearful, you would also speak to us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we reflect on our Lord's path for us during this Holy Week, we see it as a path of grace. Christ took this path from his entrance into Jerusalem 
onto the cross and through the open tomb. He did it for our sake and for our salvation. Among those who followed Christ on this path was his disciple, Peter, formerly called Simon. Peter was often regarded as the lead disciple of our Lord. He was the first disciple, one of the first disciples whom Jesus chose. And he was often representative of all the disciples. But we should not place Peter on a pedestal as some Christians do. He needed saving just as much as we all do. He was one of the first to say, Lord, save me. This was the cry that Peter made when he was sinking in the waters on the stormy Sea of Galilee. At first, he dared to trust that he could walk on the waters even as his Lord did. But his daring faith would become uh, diverted from his Lord and instead it was fixated on the strong winds and the roaring, rolling waves. Then he began to sink. Peter was not only sinking under water, but he was sinking in fear. His faith had given way to fear. And this would not be the first or even the last time that his faith would instead turn to fear. In that regard, Peter is truly representative, representative of all of the other disciples, including us. For we also succumb to fear when crises arise, and we are sorely tested beyond our own ability to see or to grasp hope in such times. However truly bold and confident Peter may have seemed, his nagging fear would continue to haunt him, and that fear would lead him to sink on more than one occasion. But Christ's amazing grace comes for those who are fearful. Isn't that good news? Uh, aren't you fearful as you look at our country and the situation that it's in, the challenges that we face? It's not a question of if we'll be afraid, but rather what will we do with our fears? How will we handle them? To whom will we give them? Even in times of crises, our Lord Jesus reaches out and catches us just as he caught Peter before he sank beneath those waves. This image of our Lord catching Peter, Peter is helpful for us as we continue our journey of faith, don't you think? It's helpful that we know that the Lord is willing to go to the extremes for us. Peter's journey began when his Lord Jesus called him. Recall the story? In Luke's account of Peter's calling, Jesus encountered him on the shores while he was wash, washing his fishing nets after a disappointing day of fishermen, something that fishermen don't want to have, right? Peter would receive a grace he certainly did not expect that day. Jesus said to him, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Well, now, that probably was not received really well by Peter, who thought that he was an expert fisherman and didn't need any advice. But while Peter may have accepted and recognized Jesus' authority as a teacher and leader, he probably questioned our Lord's fishing ability. Nevertheless, he let down the nets, as Jesus said, and voila, surprise, they would catch so many fish that their nets would begin to break. Indeed. Even their boats were beginning to sink under the huge haul of fish. Then we hear a more contrite confession from Peter on his knees in the holy presence of Jesus. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. I'm sure that Peter, like the others, was flabbergasted, truly amazed by the catch of fish. But the grace of Jesus also opened up a deeper issue in Peter's life. How to deal with his fear. He was deeply afraid to be in the presence of Jesus because now he recognized Jesus as representative of God himself in all of his holiness and majesty. Indeed, 
he was right to be afraid. But he did not understand yet the path that Jesus was taking for him. Taking for us, leading to the cross. Leading us beyond our fears. You see, when Christ calls us, he calls us not to be afraid of his love and grace that will always be there to catch us. And because it will be there to catch us, we don't need to succumb to fear in life either. With fears relieved, Jesus calls him and his fishing companions to this new mission path that, th that they will take with Jesus as he says, from now on you will be catching people. When we think of all the sinking in fear that was true for Peter, we might also consider that his name, Petros, actually means rock. Yes, rocks sink, especially big rocks, right? But rocks are also foundation stones for buildings. Peter would come to represent the rock on which the church stands. Not Peter the person, but rather the rock of our salvation is Christ and faith in Christ. The rock that upholds the very foundation of the church. The rock that Peter makes, uh, that Peter built his new life upon was much bolder uh, than anything he could do. It was his Lord Jesus Christ who came in faithfulness and love for all of us. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus would say that this faithful confession that Peter makes is itself a grace given by our Father in heaven. Faith is a gift through his Spirit's power. The church joins Peter in this confession of faith. It's a foundational stone of the church in its faithful witness to who Jesus is for us and, and a strength upon which the church is built such that not even the gates of hell can prevail against it. But this confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world also empowers us to grasp the power and freedom of the gospel, to go about loosening the chains that bind all of humanity so that people might be set free from their fears and from their bondage to sin and death. All of that sounds good to Peter. But Jesus also makes it clear that the path of grace he follows as our Messiah, as the Christ, is one that necessarily leads to the cross and death. And that Peter cannot accept that at this time is apparent. He even rebukes Jesus. But as he does, as he says, Lord, this shall never happen to you. What did Jesus have to say? Get behind me, Satan. His rock begins to sink as he dares to tell Jesus his business. Jesus calls him a scandalous stumbling block. Even refers to him as Satan. Indeed, there is no path into Jerusalem by Jesus as a glorious Messiah without the cross. Christ's grace comes only by the way of his passion. This would also be a lesson for Peter to learn when he was with Jesus on the holy mountain where the Lord was transfigured in all of his glory. Peter did not, did not fully grasp what it was all about that day. He did not as yet understand that there is no glory apart from the cross. Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But just then, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice came which said, This is my Son, my Beloved, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Peter and the others fell to the ground, and they were totally overcome by fear. Once again, Jesus came to them. He touched them. He helped them up. And he said again, do not be afraid. From their knees looking up, they saw only Jesus. The glory that they witnessed was not there in all of its brilliance. That heavenly glory had faded. 
nor were they even to speak of it again until after Jesus was raised from the dead. Only Jesus takes the path of the cross so that we may forever rise beyond our fears. Peter certainly had more to learn about this grace that comes through the cross of Christ. That time would come soon enough. In the week of his trial and passion, Jesus would tell his disciples of the dangers that now lay ahead and of how they will all be scandalized by this path that Jesus must now take. They will all flee. But Peter would denounce that danger, boasting that he would never be scandalized to follow Jesus all the way and that he would, would never flee from his side. Even though all become deserters, I will not. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. But Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. So it was in the night while Jesus was on trial in the court that Peter would be found warming his hands by the fire in the courtyard below. When a servant girl of the high priest came by and recognized him as a companion of Jesus, he denied it. I do not know or understand what you are talking about. He tried to escape, escape the scene and find another area of the courtyard where he could not be so easily noticed. But as he did, then, just then, a cock crowed. The same servant girl who recognized him earlier spotted him again in the crowd. She said to the others in the courtyard, this man is one of them. Once again, Peter denied it. Finally, one of the bystanders confronted him, saying, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. At this point, Peter brought down curses upon himself and openly swore an oath before them. I do not know this man you are talking about. And at that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Peter realized what he had done. He had done what... What That which he had boasted about and would not do, he had done that very thing. He denied his Lord. He had denied any connection between him and Jesus. His spirit got the best of him. And in his anguish and anxiety, he fell again to his knees in tears, weeping bitterly for this sinful, scandalous wrong that he said would never come to him. But Jesus' grace was not finished for Peter. Even in this fearful denial and betrayal of Jesus that severed all bonds of their connection, Jesus would not sever his love and grace for Peter. He would go to the cross for sinful, fearful Peter and for all of us. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, he would show Peter his wounded hands and his pierced side, calling Peter not to sorrow, but to rejoice in the promise that his grace would never let him go. Jesus the Messiah caught and held Peter in his crucified hands. Once again, Jesus would call Peter to catch people in the grace of this promise and to feed others in his healing and forgiving mercy. The journey for Peter, however, would also come by way of his own passion and suffering for the faith. But Peter was emboldened to pick up his cross and follow Jesus because Jesus would never let him go. Peter would testify before all. Christ's amazing grace is that which God now bestows upon all through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And when Peter was on trial before those who were critical of his proclamations about the grace of Jesus the Christ, Peter would again fearlessly confess boldly, 
we must obey God rather than any human authority. Peter would also come to a recognition that he underestimated the extent of Christ's grace for all the nations. Yet he would come to boldly confess that God's grace in Jesus Christ is a gift for all without limits or restrictions. As he once confessed boldly, so now he came to grasp fully through faith that not even the gates of hell can prevail against Christ's grace and that all shall be set free from sin and death, Jew and Gentile alike, from fear and abandonment through faith in Christ. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. And so in his own writings, to all who suffer persecutions in life and for whom fear and anxiety would certainly be present, Peter points to Christ's grace as their solid foundation. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are not to leave our crosses and all sufferings behind in fear, but to face the fiery ordeal with confidence that Jesus has called us and catches us in his grace. And as Jesus catches us, so he sends us out to catch others in the sure and certain promise of amazing grace. We follow our Lord's path to the cross in all humility and in all confidence, trusting that our Lord will lead us through the darkness of all our trials, beyond our fears, to the final fruits and celebration of his grace in heaven. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. We receive today's offering. In our prayers this morning, we're going to pray for uh, Pauline Rosen, sister of Linda Mattingly, and also uh, ask for the Lord's blessing as Linda flies home tomorrow. We pray for the Lord's care and comfort for her sister um, as she recovers from surgery. We also pray for Jack Olson as he continues to recuperate at home from uh, some sort of uh, hives or a skin condition. We'd also pray for the family of uh, Linda Abbott, uh, relative of Jimmy Davenport. We would also pray for um, 
uh, Linda Myers. Uh, this is the wife of a gentleman that I uh, uh, officiated for his uh, service at the National Cemetery in December. We would pray for Linda. She is also now dealing with cancer and is at the Mayo Clinic Hospital. Uh, we are grateful that my sister-in-law, Carolyn Reister, has been able to return home from the hospital and is doing much better. Uh, we also want to extend a, a big word of thanks from Donna Wakefield for all of the messages, prayers, and cards that she has been getting uh, during her illness, but also uh, for her birthday, which was on April's, April Fool's Day, I think. No kidding. And um, in addition, there are, of course, many names in the bulletin today. Uh, that we would continue to pray for uh, as uh, uh, they continue to have needs uh, for the Lord's help and mercy. In your bulletin, you find the note about signing up for food. I just asked the ushers to send the sign-up sheet around. Again, it went around Wednesday night. The Easter breakfast next Sunday morning will be like we did last year. We will have a variety of hot and cold things, some continental breakfast type items, but also uh, breakfast casseroles and this kind of thing, and we need your help with that. Uh, for years, we had the men cook breakfast, and guess what? The men missed out on church on Easter, and to me, that was never really acceptable. So uh, we encourage you to sign up if you're able to bring something for the Easter breakfast. Uh, if not, that's fine. The Lord will provide, and we want all to plan to join us for the special services this week. So. Uh, the last inside page of your bulletin, you have the schedule for Holy Week, 7.30 on Monday, Thursday. We have the service of Holy Communion commemorating the insta uh, in institution of the Lord's Supper. 7.30 on Friday is our Good Friday service of darkness. Uh, Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, out on the terrace in front of the church for the sunrise service. 8 to 9, the breakfast is served in the hall, and then 10 a.m. in the sanctuary for our Easter festival service. Uh, please note also the announcement in the bulletin. I think it's on the bottom of the uh, page where the calendar is for the week. The prayer vigil from 9 until 9 next Friday. Of course, from 7.30 until 9, we pray together in worship. But please sign up for one of the other times. The prayer on the prayer stand in the narthex, you'll find that sign-up sheet as well. The idea is that we want people to be praying, whether at church or at home, throughout the day. Uh, and there uh, are materials that were emailed to all of you members uh, and friends, uh, if we have your email address too. Uh, if anyone still needs those, you can let me know. We'll send them to you again. For those of you that pray here at the church, we will have some copies on hand. Uh, and we thank you for taking uh, a, a time to pray for the Lord's blessing upon our ministry and many other important requests. Uh, and then please note also the other announcements that are found there. Let's rise now as we join together in prayer. Almighty God, our Lord Jesus entered Jerusalem during the last week of his earthly ministry. He came as a humble king to take up his final steps to the cross. Help us to follow in his steps as your humble servants and living examples of your love in the world. Gracious Lord. Almighty God, today we call out Hosanna, save us now. We know and believe that Jesus is our king. Through his redeeming death and his triumphant resurrection, he's saved us and brought us into his kingdom. He calls us to follow in his footsteps, to walk in love and to forgive as we have been forgiven. Gracious Lord. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, Peter boasted of his loyalty, but failed and denied his Lord. Yet his Lord died for his sins and for ours. For Jesus' sake, you forgave Peter and you have forgiven us. As Simon Peter was called to feed your sheep, you have called us to serve your people of all ages in love. Empower us by your Spirit to serve you by serving others. Gracious Lord. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, so many of your people, the sheep of your flock, are suffering through illness, depression, and anxiety, through grief and loss. Uh, we pray for the family of Linda Evett and others. Uh, who have 
departed from this life, we pray that the message of Jesus, the resurrection and the life would bring comfort, healing and strength. Uh, we know, Lord, that many people are fearful as they hear uh, rumors uh, and uh, read reports of things happening in our country and around the world and it is a disturbing pitch picture and yet we would bring our fears to you and leave them at the foot of the cross. Have mercy on uh, all in need and heal them according to your will including uh, Pauline and Jack, uh, Linda and others uh, that need your healing and helping mercies including our shut-in members. Lead us to serve them in love and to help them in their need and to bring them the comfort of your word. Gracious Lord. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, you desire that all people would be saved and to come to know the truth. Empower us by your spirit to be witnesses for our King. Help us to grow in faith through the study of your word so that we are prepared to answer those who ask about our beliefs. Do not let us fall silent when we have opportunity to witness to our Savior. And give us wisdom, O Lord, to direct them to our church website, to invite them to watch our live stream or to listen 24 hours a day whenever they're able to our Redeemer Lutheran Radio at Live 365. Yes, Lord, help us to be your faithful witnesses. Help us to proclaim repentance and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Gracious Lord. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
may be seated, and the ushers will direct you to the Lord's table. Take a drink. This is the true blood of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you.
This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for our sins. And now may this gift of our Lord, true body and blood, strengthen and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting. We part in his peace. Amen. Amen. We rise as we conclude our worship. Now let us now by Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We conclude our hymn with a song that invites us to follow on throughout Holy Week, right on, right on in majesty.
in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.